This video is brought to you by Design to Flutter, the platform that improves your Flutter coding skills by building real projects. At the end of this video, you will be able to test your pixel perfect Flutter apps responsively with multiple devices. Well, why do you want to test them in multiple devices? The problem is that we are so used to developing our apps in one devices, whether it is on a physical device or inside our machines where it's inside our emulator or simulator. This can cause problems when the app is shipped to our users who have different phone screen sizes and resolution. Therefore, is there a way for us to test on multiple devices? Well, you guessed it, yes, there is. Introducing multi-device debugging. So I'm going to show you on how you can debug in multiple devices in your different IDEs. This IDE comprises of your VS Code, Android Studio, and also your terminal. So let's get started with VS Code. So there is a documentation on how we are able to debug in multiple devices in VS Code by the Flutter team. So the first thing is that we need to have this JSON file that consists of our different devices like our Android device and our iPhone device. And then lastly, we will have these compounds where we will just insert our Android and iPhone or whatever devices into a list and then we can run it under this all devices configuration. So let's get started. So inside your Visual Studio Code on your left, you could see there are different tabs for different section. So let's go to the run and debug section, which is represented by this bug and this play icon. So then if you don't have your own launch.json file, it will look something like this. So first we need to create a launch.json file, click on it. And then you could see there are different environments that you can set up with. So let's select Dart and Flutter. So inside the launch.json file, you can see that we have created our settings on how to launch our debug mode. So let me run through on what these different properties are. The first one is the name of your debug session. So you can see that there is this social media profile screen, which is the name of the project. If you were to look at your bottom left, you could see the same icon for the run and debug and the name of the configuration debug that we want to start with. Then the second one is request. Basically, we want to launch our debug mode. And lastly, our type. So we don't really change this too. So going back to the documentation, we now have this thing called the device ID. So we can change our name, but our request and type will be the same. But our device ID will be referencing to the different devices that we are running. So right now I have my iPhone SE for small devices and iPhone 11 Pro Max for my big devices. So in order for us to get the device ID, we can go to our terminal and then you can run Flutter devices. So this will show you the different devices that can be running for your Flutter project. So you have your iPhone 11 Pro Max, your iPhone SE, your Mac OS, your Chrome browser and such. So the ID is usually the second column that is shown inside the Flutter devices output. So the iPhone 11 Pro Max have this huge line where it says blah, 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 blah. And the second one for the iPhone SE will be like the 7 so we can show that, yeah. So now we have the device ID. We can just create different configurations. So let's just copy this JSON object and then paste them below. So the first device is going to be our iPhone SE. Then we can just type in the device ID, highlight and copy the device ID in your terminal and then paste it inside your device ID key value pair. Then you're going to do the same thing with the name over here. So I currently have the iPhone 11 Pro Max and then we can add in the device ID as such. Copy the device ID from your terminal and then paste it inside our iPhone 11 Pro Max configuration. So if you were to save this, if you were to go to the run and debug section, and then you could see the drop down menu, we have created the iPhone SE and the iPhone 11 Pro Max debug session. But we want to combine this iPhone SE and iPhone 11 Pro Max session. So to do that, inside our documentation, there is this thing called compounds. So inside the documentation, there is this thing called the compounds. Basically, it is just a setting that allows us to run multiple devices. So let's highlight and copy and paste it right below the square brackets. 
and then we can just put in the different values that we have created so the value refers to the name of the configuration so you can copy and type in iPhone SE and then you can copy the iPhone 11 Pro Max and then paste this as such so if there is a warning saying that value is not accepted don't worry because this is just the launch.json not being updated with the different names of our configuration so now let's try and run all of our devices let's go to our run and debug and now you can see there is this configuration that's called all devices and now let's click on this and this should actually and this has set our run and debug and this has set our run and debug configuration so we can just click it and then click on all devices and now it's going to launch for both our iPhone SE and our iPhone 11 Pro Max if one of the devices is not running or it has an error you can just restart it and it actually will work so don't worry other than having iPhone devices you can put Android devices you can even put your Chrome browser as well so the thing about this is that if you were to run multiple devices this will take a toll on your CPU so expect your laptop or your machine to run very noisily or very hot and there you go you have successfully launched your iPhone SE and your iPhone 11 Pro Max to debug your responsive Flutter apps if you want to learn more about how to create responsive apps I have a video at the top right hand corner in order for you to use this package called Pixel Perfect so now if you were to do some changes for example if I want to have the height to be a little bit lower so I'll put 70 for obvious changes you could see performing hot reload on both of my iPhone SE and my iPhone 11 Pro Max so if I hot reload again then it will actually change for both my devices however the thing is if I were to for example change so the list of user stats and I change this to 200 and save this I need to do a hot restart but for the hot restart it only works on the current device that VS Code is actually running so the current session is iPhone SE so if I were to restart then it only runs my iPhone SE which would then restart its number from from 210 to 200 so that's just the disadvantage of running multiple devices in Visual Studio Code this is also documented under the known issues where the hot reload button works for all sessions but the hot restart only does the active session or the active device that is running so now we are done with Visual Studio Code the next one will be Android Studio so let's open up our Android Studio and the thing about Android Studio is that it actually has the feature of running in multiple devices so at the top here you could see you can select the different devices that you want to run so we can just run iPhone 11 Pro Max just click on the play button and then you can run the iPhone SE and launch the debug session so to know whether your debug session is running it actually has created two console tabs for you so one is your iPhone SE and the other one will be your 11 Pro Max Alright, so sometimes you might lose a connection to a device. You can just launch it again. Once you have your devices running, the next thing is if you want to, for example, have a change and then do a hot reload, inside Android Studio, you are able to actually hot reload and hot restart in all devices. So let's try the hot restart. And you can see that the devices has been hot restarted. So this is an advantage for you if you want to run multiple devices in Android Studio so Visual Studio Code is still unable to hot restart but for both Android Studio and VS Code you are able to hot reload alright so for Android Studio if I were to for example change a uh, sized box height to 70 and then if I were to save this then I could actually flutter hot restart for both devices so that's the cool thing about Android Studio and Hot Reload also works once we are done with Android Studio the last one will be the terminal so in order for us to run multiple devices in terminal alright so for terminal in order for you to run multiple devices you can type in flutter run dash d all press enter and then it will run all of the devices that the terminal or flutter has detected so it's detected 
three devices, iPhone 11, iPhone SE, and Mac OS. So in this current build for Flutter, which I'm in currently in master, and also I'm using the M1 machine, uh, it's not really compiling as what I intended it to be. So that's why you can see there is a build failure. Therefore, it is kind of successful as it is able to run both devices, but it's not able to run a debug session for these both devices. Pretty sad. So in summary, we learned how to do multi-device debugging in VS Code, Android Studio, and Terminal. And this will really help you to see whether your app or whether what you code out is responsive. That's about it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more of this kind of video, subscribe down below. And comment down whether your Flutter Run dash all in Terminal works if you are using Mac but more importantly, if you are able to run on the devices that you want to test your responsiveness. That's about it. Stay safe and all the best. Bye-bye.